Welcome once again. My name is Gary. This is the fourth in a series of videos I'm doing about, uh, not so much about shooting, but about what happens after that to bring about the greatest chance of success with astrophotography. In the third video, I did uh, a fairly extensive familiarization with a software program called Cyril. It's a free program. And uh, we became familiar with the program. So in this video, I will be assuming that you've seen that. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and do a full uh, stacking session. So I'm going to just change over uh, my view. And we are going to launch Cyril. There's a lot of background information that went into getting ready to do this, but uh, we are now ready. Now at this point, uh, just to make you familiar a little bit, or if you haven't seen it for a while, we've got uh, in Cyril's home directory a bias stacked um, fit file. Cyril works with fit files. We have a pre-processed flat stack, so that's ready to go. We have 88 light frames uh, that were taken uh, of the North American nebula. We have a process folder here, which is at the moment empty, but as soon as we go through the first stage of this, it will no longer be empty. Um, so with that, we're kind of ready to go. Uh, so we're going to be using scripting. We're going part way with this. We are going to use um, no darks, master flat, master bias, no stack. Uh, we're not, we're going to stop short of stacking. And everything's in place. So as soon as I click this, we are going to uh, go into some CPU intensive operations, which will mess up this recording. So I am going to just stop this for now. And uh, when it's done, we'll have a look at what happened. I would like to point out, though, at this point in time, we have 324 gigabytes of space on the hard drive available. Cyril does generate a lot of ancillary files, and uh, we'll kind of clean up those as we go, just kind of so you know what we have. So this, uh, this script, I'm about to press start. I will be pausing this recording. Okay, so Cyril is done now. Uh, if you look at the uh, console screen here, again, I introduced you to all of these things in the prior video in this series, but total execution time is four minutes. Um, it has done quite a bit of stuff in that time. It's generated three sequences of light images. The first one was uh, converting the camera raw files into fit files. The second one was uh, pre-processing those FIT files with the calibration frames. And then the third one was registering those FIT files to generate a third sequence. So if we look here, if you can see my mouse, 88 images processed, zero filled, 88 registered. That doesn't mean we're going to stack all 88. That's one of the reasons I don't use scripting to stack, is because you want to start making some choices here. But just looking at the last one, it, it went through all of them like this, but it found 1,902 pair matches, uh, scale X, scale Y, rotation, um, the amount that shifted it, 61 pixels to the left, 41 down. So there's going to be some stacking artifacts in this when we're all done. Uh, it also comes up with a quality measure, uh, full width, half maximum. This last image was 4 and 3.8, um, which means it's a pretty good image. Anyways, at this point, um, I think I want to go clean up the process directory a little bit, and I'll just show you what's in there. Sorry, there we go. So, zero cur current project. This uh, process directory was empty when we started. Let's just have a quick look at it here. Properties, um, 60 gigs to generate those three sequences. So we're going to go in there. Now first we have this light sequence. That's just the converted camera frames. I'm going to shift-click, right-click, shift-delete, which bypasses the uh, recycle bin. So now we have our pre-processed light sequence. 
and we have our registered pre-processed light sequence. Now normally I could get rid of the, the first one right now, but I want to demonstrate something in this video before I do that, and we will be generating two more sequences very shortly, but just to give you an idea um, what is there. So let's go back to Ciro. Now at this point, we can go to Sequence. We want to load one of those sequences. Search Sequences. Well, Cyril's, there's nothing there. Cyril is still in its home directory, and all these files are in the process directory. So we're going to use the command line at the bottom, a very simple old-style DOS command. CD means change directory, process, and enter. And now, if you look up here, we are in the process folder. So now we're going to search sequences. Okay, there's my pre-processed lights, and there's my registered pre-processed lights. I think we'll look at the registered one first. This is loading this sequence now, and if we want to, we can open a frame list. Ciro will always put the best image it found in terms of quality um, at number one. So this has reference image ticked. If you wanted to change your reference, reference image for any reason, you would just select a different one and click on reference image. But it's pretty good at selecting the one with the best quality. I can't think of any reason to change it unless you wanted the stark, stacking artifacts on one side of the image versus the other. Um, that's pretty much um, the only reason I could do. Now, the green channel is the one that has the least noise. So this is where Cyril assesses quality. So you can, you can look at each of these. So here's five point. Lower is better with this measure. We'll go into a, an auto stretch view. Now this is looking at one, one sub. And uh, this was a bad one. A little bit of star trailing, whatnot going on. It, it's kind of evaluating the stars is, is how it does that. And similarly, you could look at any sub. Here's a pretty good one. So click on it, load it. You can see why it made the, how it evaluated that. And then, of course, you can see the stacking artifacts there uh, because this particular image got shifted a fair distance. Now, if we go back to our reference image, that's not there because everything is centered on this image. So we might as well close this now. And we can go over to the plot tab. And because we have a registered sequence loaded, we can kind of have an idea of what's there. And I'm assuming this green line is some kind of average. And it's measuring full width half measure, which is a, um, a way of evaluating the quality of the stars. And uh, basically, we're kind of following, it looks like, right around 5, which is not horrible for a DSLR on a um, unguided tracker. And the other thing is, as I've mentioned in prior videos, I was going for maximum light shooting this set. So there's a lot of chromatic aberration in the stars. Uh, they're not great quality. And so this graph probably makes it look, look worse than it really is. The little circle here is the reference frame. And if you changed it to a different reference frame, the circle would show up wherever it was that you chose. So let's go over to the stacking tab. And I'm not going to stack quite yet. I want to show you one more thing before I do that. But what we have is a couple of sections here. The top section is about rejecting pixels within each image. So if you have a satellite go by, uh, it'll clip those pixels out of that image, um, or an airplane, um, these kinds of things. If you have an airplane that leaves contrails that last for a few minutes, not quite so sure. But um, so what we have is average stacking with rejection. Uh, there's other options, but for your stacking of the lights, uh, this is this is the one. If you only had four or five or six lights and you wanted to bring out more signal, you could use some stacking, um, which adds one to the other instead of using average values. But if you get too many lights going, pretty soon it'll just be washed out if everyone gets added to the other one. So uh, average stacking with rejection. 
Normalization, additive with scaling, recompute, no necessary, that, that was done uh, during uh, registration. Output normalization, no. That's you, normalization is used on uh, some of the calibration frames and uh, in the pre-processing phase, but that's all done here. So uh, for this, if you hover the tooltip, it says warning, this should not be checked for master stacking. So we're going to stay away from that. Now, pixel rejection. There's several uh, options here. Uh, typically, especially if you use Deep Sky Stacker, you'd use a sigma clipping with low and high set at three. That's a good algorithm. But there's something newer out now. It's called linear fit clipping. And it's something that was written by the developer of Pix Insight. So this is available to owners of Pix Insight, but I, I'm not certain it's available other than that. Um, I'm going to assume it's more advanced, and I'm going to select it. Its defaults are 5 and 5 uh, for the rejection parameters. So that's all about pixel rejection. Now, this bottom part is about image rejection. Now, we've registered every image, but this is DSLR on a tracker, so we're not going to be using every image. Uh, that's not reasonable to expect. So there is a variety of filters here. You can select certain images to be included in the stack. You can use a full width, half maximum uh, filter, a weighted one, roundness, or overall quality. I'm going to go with roundness because my stars are not in great shape in this set of images because of the shooting f4 on an f4 lens. So. What they're telling me here is if we use 90% of the images, we will have a roundness value at or greater than 0.771. So this means that the stars it's analyzed will be no more than about 25% wider than they are high or higher than they are wide. And that's a bit optimistic. I through a few runs doing this, I kind of like to go for about 80%. So I'm dropping the percentages here. Let's just see, we're down to 65 images at 0 0.486. I'm shooting for about round this value about 80. So at this point it's going to stack 74 images of the 88. Now I could add a second filter. If I had better stars I'd add the full width half maximum filter. And we'd be shooting for less than about 5. So if we just click down until we get close to 5 at this point, we're stacking 58 out of the 88, applying both these filters. But I'm not going to use this one because the stars here are not indicative uh, on that measure of, of the quality of the image. Uh, the stars are just bad. So we'll get rid of that filter. So now we're stacking 74. Okay. Now, before I do that, I just want to go back to the sequence. And we're going to load up the pre-processed light sequence. Now this one, at this point, is not registered. I don't know why we've got a plot. I guess it's still taking it from the other one. But at this point, we've loaded this sequence, and I've got another script here. If you have gradients in your images from light pollution, from a light pole nearby, even from some clouds or a moon, uh, a rising moon can start to cause some gradients. If we stack our stack, there's a tool in here called background extraction, which uh, gets rid of gradients. But if that's not effective for you, there's another script in here, sorry, scripts, called per sub background extraction. So if I run this script right now, it'll generate two more sequences of lights. One will be every sub with a gentle background extraction done on it. And then the second one will be a registered version of that. 
So at that point, if those images are better because of the gradients, you might want to stack that stack. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't have any super gradient images to, to try it on. But if you did do that, what you would do is come back after it's finished and look for the uh, R underscore BKG, which is background extraction, PP light sequence. And then you could load that one up here and uh, plot it and stack it. So we're going to go back to our lights. We're not actually going to do that. And we're going to go back to stacking. Everything is still in place. Uh, 74 of 88, linear fit clipping. Everything looks good. Now the only thing is, they have a suggested uh, file name here. I'm going to change that. And I don't really want this file in the process folder. So I'm going to start by typing dot dot slant. That means in computer language to go up one directory. We'll be in Cyril's main directory at that point. And we're going to call this R and D. Tell me what filter it was. 8, even though it's point 0.8. And then I'm just going to go x74. So if I end up stack and then dot fit. So if I end up stacking more than once, uh, this file name will give me a clue as to what's there. Um, so when I start stacking, this is also going to be processor intensive. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when we are done this stage. Okay, we are done with stacking now. Uh, that took on my machine four minutes, two seconds. Now, one thing I should mention is that it was due anyways, but when I took this up, I did buy a fairly high-powered um, computer. Um, on my old machine, if it was capable of running 64-bit programs, it, it would have taken hours. Um, so. Run times will vary depending on the capability of your hardware, but uh, with a with a modern, you know, um, processor, uh, this this run took about uh, four minutes. So Cyril has loaded the stacked result into this window, but before we do anything, this is important. I want to type cd change directory space dot dot because right now we're still in the process folder. And if you don't switch out of the process folder, it'll get kind of hung there. So we're going to hit enter. And if you just double check up here, we're back in current project. Now I instructed Cyril to drop that file in, uh, in the Cyril current project folder. And there it is. Our uh, round eight was our filter 74 files. So I don't need to open it. It's already open in here. Now you can tell right away that there is, uh, okay, that's odd. We are going to, we're just going to reopen that. Okay, so in the auto stretch view, we're looking at the red channel right now. These three are real images. Every fit file has a red, green, and blue layer. The RGB layer is not a layer, it's just a synthetic window, so you can actually do very little in the RGB window. Um, but all cameras have two green sensors for every um, red and blue sensor, so the green is going to be the most luminous. There's our blue channel, and if we go to RGB, it's going to be green. It's nothing to be concerned about, and there it is. So I'm just going to go to the blue green channel. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is crop. And this crop is kind of important because it's setting the image for the rest of the project. If I want to come back and re-stretch anything, I want to have the same crop and the same image uh, to add to my project. So uh, in Cyril, it's very simple. Anywhere except the RGB window. If you click here, you can't do anything. So anywhere except for the RGB window, we'll go back to green because it most clearly shows where the uh, where the stacking artifacts are. And then I'm going to right click selection, and this one is going to end up being four by three. 
Uh, the star of the neb down here has a problem. Um, I'd rather just crop it out than try to deal with that. So I'm going to set the ratio at 4 to 3. And uh, we'll take this up a little bit. Let's go for around 5,000 width. It's going to be 3750 height. And then we have very little room to really choose where to place it here. But might as well go as low as we can. The North American Nebula is the main thing, but there's also the Pelican down here. Um, and then we're going to go right click and crop. And that is done. Then we're going to go right click selection free ratio because we don't want to be stuck in that 4 to 3 ratio um, in any of the following steps. So the first thing to do is put it into a histogram view, and we're looking for gradients here. And there apparently is. There's a fairly central gradient, if you will. Uh, I don't think it's quite vignetting, but we want to even that out, because when you stretch, and further process, such things just become problematic. Now this image is still linear, and this is the crux of why I started using Cyril. Um, it has other advantages, as you've already seen. But the big thing is we can do linear operations. If you're not equipped with Pixinsight or similar stuff, um, expensive stuff, you have no access to these tools other than Cyril. And Getting your linear stuff done at this point is ultimately a big step on your way to success in, uh, in processing your images. So I'm just going to go back to an auto stretch view and we'll go to a fairly contrasty one. Yeah, let's, let's go with blues. Um, I'm looking for a very black area. I think it'll be up here for when we do a color calibration. But our first step is to deal with background extraction. Um, this is pretty powerful. It gets rid of gradients, kind of averages out the background. Now I mentioned earlier we had that other script to, um, to uh, process every light file with a weak background extra um, extraction if you have severe gradients. That might help. Um, you can, if you deal with them in each sub a little bit, probably have a better result here. But again, I don't have subs like that uh, where I shoot is quite dark, so uh, not an issue. Anyways, the way to use background extraction, the samples per line is uh, when we hit generate, there's going to be a grid of sample points. And if you increase the samples per line, that grid gets tighter. I find the default is fine. Degree orders, how strong will they affect me? And uh, the individual sub uh, background extraction we could have done is set to a degree order of one. So it's much more gentle than this one. I think it only goes one to four. Yes, it does. Now tolerance is sensitivity to light. We've got a lot of sample points here on parts of the image. We don't want them. So I happen to know on this image, we just drop tolerance to the bottom and hit generate again. So that's gotten rid of a lot of them. Now, we don't want any samples. Samples on white stars, you can't really avoid it. But the algorithm provides for that by giving less weight to samples that have uh, more weight in them. But the ones we have to be careful of are the ones that lie on red nebulosity, because if those ones are allowed to participate in the algorithm, that red nebulosity will just get absorbed into the background. It'll become part of the flattening process. So we have some dubious ones here. That one's dubious. In Cyril, you can left click to place a point and right click to remove it. So this one is dubious. That one I don't think I want, nor that one, nor that one. That one's on the edge. I think that one's on the edge as well. Now, as we get higher in this image, there's less red nebulosity, so I'm not too concerned about these ones in the star fields. This one, now these guys are kind of sitting pretty close to places that we want to preserve. I think that's okay. Um, 
So we're just going to hit apply now. Okay, that's made some considerable changes. So I'm going to go back to this auto stretch view, and that's much flatter, much flatter. I think that's a way better image. In fact, you can see the pelican clearly here. That's not going to be in the linear view, but we're going to be able to bring it out. Okay, so this is auto, um, an auto stretch view of the blue channel. Let's go to RGB. We still have the screen. So our next stage, okay, I'm going to use the blue channel for color calibration. Now in this one, it's pretty straightforward. We pick something that is black and in Cyril you can hold control and your mouse wheel will scroll and you can also drag with the left uh, mouse button. We're going to go here, look at red, green is going to be everywhere, look at blue. This is pretty black right here. So I'm going to drag a selection. Tiny bit of white is okay, but you don't want very much white in this because this is setting the background, it's setting what is black in the image. So we're going to, up here on the right, click use current selection, it's loaded in the coordinates, background neutralization. That's made a big change. Now our next goal is to find something white. And my stars in this image are very chromatically aberrated. Um, so what is white? That, that's difficult at this point in time. I think right here. See these two? some chromatic aberration around them. We've got some white there. It's, it's off white, but it's close to what we want. So again, we need to go back. We can't touch the screen in the RGB mode. So we're going to just drag a selection like this. That should do it. You don't want pure white, but close to white. Now down here, we're going to select use current selection and hit apply. So now we can close this and zoom right out and go to RGB. Now I'm going to, this was a two-stage process, so we'll undo them one at a time. This was by selecting the white, and this was the background neutralization, so they both contribute. And we've got our reds here. Now one last thing we can do, some might call it cheating, but I'm kind of okay with it because my stars are in horrible shape, and it's a valid tool. Uh, we're trying to provide something nice. We have photometric calibration. So we're going to, this is the North American Nebula. Check spelling, hit find. This is going to the internet, to the Simbad server, and it's loading up the coordinates in the sky. This is a plate solving solution. It needs to know the focal length of your lens. So I was 200 millimeters and it needs to know the pixel size of your camera, which is easily determined. For me, 3.92. I'm going to uncheck flip image and leave everything else alone. And we're just going to hit OK here. So what it's doing, applying color calibration to 302 stars. And that's happening right now. Um, it's normalizing on the blue channel. 25 stars were excluded, and it's also done a background sky uh, change. So let's undo that, have a look. And you can see what it did. It's subtle, but it's there. It still looks a wee bit green to me, so we've got one more tool up here. It's called Remove Green Noise, and uh, apply. And that is done. And uh, this is now a pre-processed image. Now the next stage, we're still linear, by the way. This all happened in a linear state. And that's what makes Cyril so powerful, is that you can do these kinds of things without actually stretching it to see what you're doing. Um, so the next stage is to, well, number one I'm going to do is save. That saves that file that we created with stacking. 
And if I ever have to come back and restretch, this is where I'm starting. I don't have to go through all that pre-processing again. So the next stage is to actually stretch it. And we're going to be doing that in a way that generates TIFF files to take into GIMP or Photoshop. Um, to me, that is part of post-processing this image, so it will be part of the next video. The reason being that you're going to generate different panels or stretch with different methods depending on what your goal is. Uh, there are choices here. And I'll, do, I'll be doing partial stretching within Cyril, and then we'll take it the rest of the way in GIMP. And again, we're shooting for certain things. So I think we'll leave this video uh, where it is for now. Um, I kind of wrapped up stacking and pre-processing into one video that was kind of hard enough to do when you had a stack in front of you. So we will be uh, continuing with the last one, which is taking it from here to a finished image using, uh, in my case, it'll be GIMP, uh, along with Starnet++. And we'll be using um, NIC Collection, part of it. Uh, all these tools are free. And in that video, I'll pro be providing links to each of them in the description of the video, but not at this point. Now, I will be publishing these scripts, and that will be a link with this video after this video is up on YouTube, uh, because I need to put a link to that YouTube video in the README file. So that's coming, but it's not there yet. Anyways, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this, um, and we will continue on very shortly with the last video in this series, which is post-processing. And that one... You're kind of on your own now. You've got a you've got a properly pre-processed image after you stretch. You can do what you want, but I, I found some pretty cool techniques uh, out there. Um, I'll use some of them with this image. I'm also going to do a galaxy, and uh, again, I can do that in 15 or 20 minutes if I'm not doing a YouTube video. But I can get some exceptional results. So you you might want to visit that one when it's done too. Thank you for visiting.